Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Cassandra and I'm going to take you through a full body flexibility flow. So this is really just a great full body slow stretch. There is no strength required in this class. Um, just a very mellow, feel good type of practice that's going to help increase flexibility in your hamstrings, your hips, along your spine, in your shoulders. And I'm not using any props, however, you can always have them with you if you have them at home. I would say this is an intermediate level practice. And let's begin in Balasana Child's Pose. So because we are working on flexibility in this class, I'm going to bring my knees pretty far away from one another. Big toes together and reaching the hips back towards your heels. As you sit those hips down, think of lengthening out of your lower back. So even finding a nice stretch along the side of the waist, reaching out long through your arms and then folding down. So of course, depending on the mobility you already have in your hips, you might need to change the width of your knees. You can always bring them closer in towards one another to make this less intense of a pose. But I am looking for a bit of intensity in this practice. And while this is not a yin yoga practice, it's very much still going to be a flow. We are holding the poses maybe a little bit longer. And moving slowly and mindfully. So that this class can also help to soothe our nervous system to help alleviate stress and anxiety. So give yourself a good five slow, steady breaths here. Every time you exhale, notice if you can relax your shoulders a little more. And then relaxing your hips a little more. You might find that when you release physical tension from your body, it becomes easier to also alleviate mental tension, emotional tension. And stretch your arms out even further. And we'll come up. We'll go into Parjva Balasana or thread the needle. Slowly lifting up. From tabletop, you'll want your hips to be aligned over your knees. And we're going to thread the right arm under, lowering shoulder and ear to the floor. So the further you get your right arm, the deeper you're going to feel this one. Once you've settled the shoulder on the ground, press your hips over towards the right. And you can push into your left hand and also push into the floor with your right arm. And another option available to you here would be to extend your left arm up overhead. So a deep twist through the upper back, but we want to keep our hips directly leveled over our knees. Relax your neck, let your head be heavy. your left arm was straight slide the palm back in and really slowly lift back up tabletop pose and before we go to the other side just take cat and cow inhale drop your belly lift your gaze lift your tailbone exhale round and contract draw your navel in 
one more round like this. And second side, Parjva Balasana. Thread your left arm underneath you, left shoulder and left ear come down to the mat. And once you have them here, push out into your left hip so that you're not leaning your body weight all the way to the right just because you're twisting. Keep some energy and strength in your arms as they push into the floor. And you might choose to reach your right arm up overhead. I like to come up onto the right fingertips. I find I get a little bit more leverage this way without having to use as much strength. Really feel into that space between your shoulder blades. Breathing into the upper chest. And slide your right hand back down. Take your time. We're just going to take that cat and cow a few more times here. Hands under your shoulders, knees under your hips. Inhale. Back bend. Exhale, round and contract. One more. Anahatasana, our puppy pose stretch. Walk your hands forward. Keep your hips over your knees and just soften forehead towards the mat. So it's up to you. You can either keep your arms engaged with your elbows lifted off the mat, or you can make this a bit more passive by letting your elbows come down to the floor. So your hips are nice and high. Instead of thinking of dropping your belly towards the ground, think instead of getting your heart to touch the floor. So really melting through the mid and upper back stretching deeply into our shoulders into the upper arms and i know this can be an awkward one to hold sometimes we're not here forever five more breaths here And you can go ahead and slide onto your belly. And we'll take a side sphinx pose. So rather than just staying here in this way, you can turn your right forearm, roll onto your right hip, and you're just stacking your left leg over the right one. You might be more comfortable staying down on your forearm. If you'd like to intensify this, you're gonna come up on the palm. So just a big side body stretch trying to get in all of our essential spinal movements. Keep reaching out towards your heels. One more big breath here. And if you are on your hand, you can bend into the elbow. Take a moment to pause just in your Sphinx pose pushing pubic bone into the floor, reaching your tailbone towards your heels and lengthening up and out. Press your shoulders down and away from your ears. Imagine you're gripping the floor and dragging yourself forward. And let's ease onto the other side. So roll onto your left hip stacking one hip over the other, one shoulder over the other, either down on your form or intensifying this pose by lifting up. And your left shoulder is going to lift up towards the ear here. It's not a big problem. That's totally fine. 
let yourself kind of sink into this one so that you're really getting that lateral flexion, that deep side bend. Bend into the elbow one last time, back into that Sphinx pose. Pull your heart forward, reach long through your legs, through your toes. No compression in your low back. And release down. Let's find our first downward dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. So a little bit of strength definitely required in this pose, but truly just a wonderful full body stretch. And if you feel like I tend to have a lot of tightness around my ankles and in my calves, so you can bend into your knees, you might feel this more in your hamstrings or at the attachment point in the glutes. And while it might be easy to feel the stretch in your back of and the back of your legs, see if you can also get it into your arms and through your spine. So really press your chest back towards your thighs. Don't worry about strengthening your neck. Just let your head be heavy. Relax your neck. Relax your facial muscles. And your weight can go on your left leg this time as you reach your right leg up towards the sky. Go ahead and bend your right knee and open up your hip. Don't worry about keeping your shoulders squared. In fact, you might feel it a uh, deeper stretch if you come up onto your right fingertips and kind of look underneath your right armpit. Trying to get your knee to be as high as it can go. And let's straighten the leg, set it back down right away to the other side. Left leg rises, bend your left knee, open up that hip. And maybe coming up onto your left fingertips as well. And release, downward dog. Walk your feet forward, ragdoll pose at the top of the mat. So your feet can be a little wider than your hips. You can bend your knees, maybe holding onto your elbows. Let yourself dangle. And again, it might be easier for you to feel this in the backs of your legs but see if you can also decompress along your spine. And sometimes that just means you need to bend your knees a little bit more. Fingertips to the floor. We'll come into Anjani Asana, our low lunge. So keep your right leg as it is. Step your left foot back. Lower your left knee down to the floor. And you want your right knee to be directly over the top of your ankle. And we're just going to melt the hips forward and down. I'm going to keep my fingertips on the floor. If there's another variation of this pose that you prefer, you're welcome to come into it. So letting gravity pull the hips down without collapsing in the lower back. And you might choose to stay here or you can add on with a quad stretch, reaching your right hand to the back of the mat, bending into your left knee and see if, seeing if you can catch a hold of your foot. So what we're not going to do is lift our hips up and then reach. Try to keep your hips as low as they were in that low lunge and bring the heel in towards you. And take a look down at your right foot. Notice if you're rolling to the outer toe Try to push down into your big right toe. And carefully release so you're facing forward again. Tuck the back toes under, lift the back knee off the floor and you might wanna bring that back foot in a little bit. Parjvottanasana into your pyramid fold. So if the hamstrings are really tight, you can always bend into your front knee a little bit or readjust the width and the distance between both feet. But notice how that left hip is gonna to wanna to pull back as much as possible. Try to squeeze it forward and push your right hip back. Press 
flexing into both feet evenly. Relax your head. Start to bend into that front knee and just step to the top of the mat. Uttanasana, forward fold. And let's find our low lunge on the second side. Step the right foot back. Lower your right knee down. Make sure your left knee is over your ankle on Janiyasana. I am keeping my hands down on the mat. You can do a different variation of the pose at home. Soften your shoulders away from your ears. Slow, steady breath down into your belly. And if you'd like to add your quad stretch, you're gonna circle that left arm back. Keep pushing into that big left toe and make the foot come to your hand, not the other way around. it in a little more and we'll carefully release Parjvottanasana so as you're facing forward lift your back knee off the floor and bring it in a little bit as you straighten your left leg and fold on down squaring your hips Try to push your left hip back and squeeze your right hip forward. Bend into your front knee, Uttanasana, forward fold. And from here, widen your feet a little bit, turn your heels in, toes out, lower down, malasana, into your squat. So for this one, see if you can rest your heels on the mat. Start with your hands at your heart, using your elbows to push your knees away from one another. And we'll add a little bit more of a stretch for the upper body. So squeeze your glutes to push your knees out. You're gonna reach your right hand out at about a 45 degree angle. Left arm stretches up to the sky. Notice how this might make your left knee collapse in. You really need to actively work to keep it pressing open. Big side body stretch. And let's switch sides. Crawl out through your left arm. Reach out through the left fingertips. Right arm up this time. Squeeze into your glutes so that you're still pressing that right knee out. And let's release, coming back through to center. And from here into Baddha Konasana, into our butterfly fold. So I'm just gonna let my hips come down. Soles of your feet together, knees apart. And I'm just going to hold on to my big toes with my two piece fingers. And you can choose the distance here between the hips and the heels. As you press those knees down, think of it lifting and leading with your chest. And start with a flat back for this one. So I'm actively pulling myself on my toes in order to lead with my chest. So I'm not going down all that far. You might be able to go further at home. Flat backs are just challenging for me, but that's why I'm doing them. And you might even want to use your elbows to press just a tiny little bit, like half a pound of pressure on each thigh. And let's release. So making this more of a yin style fold, I'm gonna release my arms out in front of me and let my spine naturally round. 10 full breaths right here. Breathing in and out through your nose with your inhales just as long as your exhales. Letting go a little bit more.
giving yourself permission to do less. And start to walk your hands back in, lifting on up. You can stretch your legs out in front of you. We'll set up for Paschimottanasana, our seated forward fold. And again, we'll start with a flat back. You might not be going very far in this one. This is pretty much as far as I can go, holding on maybe to the big toes again. So straight spine, keeping this active and engaged. Trying to keep the legs straight, but a little bit of a micro bend is perfectly fine here. And drawing your lower belly in. And go ahead and fold. Let your spine round in this one. Walk your hands in, lifting up inch by inch, and bend into your knees, cross at the ankles, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward dog. Should feel really good after this forward fold, or the few forward folds that we did. And just notice how this down dog feels as opposed to the first one we did just a few minutes ago. Are you able to get your heels a little bit closer towards the earth? Do you find a little bit more space through your arms as you lengthen out? And again, let's reach our right leg up towards the sky. Bend your right knee, open up your right hip, maybe come up onto your right fingertips. Again, just checking in to see and feel the difference. Straighten it out and we'll go to the other side. Left leg rises, bend your left knee, open up your hip, maybe come up onto the left fingertips. Straighten it out and release. Ragdoll fold at the top of the mat. Walk your feet forward. The knees might be a little straighter the second time around. You might be able to fold a little bit deeper. And if not, no big deal. Release your hands down, bend your knees. We're just gonna come up to stand so we can set up for our goddess pose, Utkata Konasana. So step your feet out wide, turn your heels in, toes out, and start to bend down in your knees. So just like what we did in Malasana in our squat, we don't want our knees to buckle in. You need to squeeze and press them open and lower down as much as you possibly can and see if you can bring your elbows to the insides of the thighs to push them open a little bit wider. So this really low, deep squat. I like to just sway a little bit side to side in this one. Finding a little bit more space. And staying low, you can now come up on your palms. So keep your legs as they are and just drop one shoulder down, roll the other one back. So adding a little twist and a shoulder release and switching sides, left shoulder down, right shoulder back. We'll come into our wide legged forward fold, Prasarita Padottanasana. Straighten your legs and turn your feet so that they're parallel to the shorter edges of your mat as you fold on in. And similar to what we've done in our seated forward folds, I'm gonna grab a hold of the big toes with the two piece fingers. As you inhale, lengthen out, flat back, and then exhale, start to bend your elbows away from each other as you reach the crown of your head down towards the mat. And it might be reaching the mat. You can bring your feet in a little bit closer towards one another if you wanna deepen the stretch. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but if you're tighter, you might feel more comfortable in the pose by widening your feet and widening your stance. 
Really decompress your neck here in the pose. And release the hold of your big toes. Start to walk towards your right foot and turn. So pivoting in this runner's lunge. We're gonna take our pigeon pose on the right side. So bring your right knee behind your right wrist. Square off the pelvis and stretch out back through your left thigh and left leg. And you might wanna feel into a little back bend in this one first crawling the hands back, reaching it back. Sometimes you can even just hold on to your mat in order to lift up through your heart. And let's fold on down 10 breaths in this pose. Ikapada Raja Kapotasana. And sometimes our arms do need to engage in this pose in order to hold ourselves at an edge that is safe. But you shouldn't really be pushing against the floor or struggling against your body weight. If you feel like that's what's happening, you're probably just too deep in the pose. You might need a block or some pillows under your hips. Or you can always do the reclined pigeon pose variation by flipping over onto your back. So the arms can be engaged for stability, but not for resistance. And start to lift back up just hold so staying in this pigeon pose but just lifting through your chest and just for a few breaths we'll see if we can add a quad stretch in this one as well so you can reach back with your left hand this time for that left foot it's pretty normal for the hips to lift up we are definitely intensifying this one and just pull it in not here forever Carefully releasing. Let's find downward dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Oh, getting that big release from that right leg. And let's reach that right leg up to the sky. Bend your knee, open up your hip. Maybe taking a few knee circles, hip circles, whatever feels good. And let's bring our left knee to our left wrist. Pigeon pose on the second side, squaring off the pelvis so you're not leaning on one hip more than the other. And before you fold, you can try to get yourself in a little back bend, reaching your hands back behind you, maybe holding onto the mat. And leading with the heart, folding on down for 10 slow, steady breaths. Maybe using some props if you feel that will be more appropriate for you here. Just whatever works. Hmm. Notice where in your body you're holding on to tension. What can you relax a little more?
and go ahead and lift back up. We'll take that quad stretch again before finding our down dog. So as you're lifted up, you can bend into your right knee, which uh, reach back with your right arm as you pull that in. As much as possible, try to keep your hips squared, but they are going to rotate a bit to the right unless you're very, very, very flexible. And let's release Adho Mukha Svanasana. And reach your left leg up and back. Any movements here that feel good, your body will know what it wants right now after that big hip opener. And this is our last downward facing dog. So take a few breaths here just to stretch it all out. Noticing again what has changed and shifted. Let's come back to our puppy pose. So knees down on the floor, hips over your knees. As you walk your hands out and melt through your heart, this time we're going to press our palms together and bend at the elbows, bringing the thumbs towards the back of the head, back of the neck. So just getting deeper into the shoulders and deeper into the triceps. <sighs> Three more breaths right here. And go ahead and straighten your arms and slither onto your belly. We'll come into uh, what we call in yin yoga, sometimes broken wing or a laying chest opener. So you can reach your right arm out to the side. I like to keep the elbow bent at a 90 degree angle. You might prefer to have your arms straight out, but you're just rolling on your right hip, right shoulder, right ear. And I like to bend into the knees here. So getting a big stretch through that right shoulder, that right arm, maybe into the pectorals. You can either push your left hand into the floor, sometimes bringing your left hand to your low back can be a little bit more comfortable and just play a little bit with the angle of your right arm so we roughly want our elbow to be at the same height as our shoulder maybe a little bit higher with a 90 degree angle in your right arm palm flat to the floor you'll feel it when you're there if you don't feel anything keep playing around with the angle One more big breath here. And straighten your legs, roll onto your stomach. We'll go to the other side, take your time. So finding that broken wing with the left arm, left elbow bent at around a 45 or sorry, 90 degree angle. And go ahead and roll onto left hip, left shoulder, left ear. Maybe your right hand pushes into the ground, or maybe you bring your right hand towards your low back.
One more big breath on the side. And carefully release. Take your time. And let's come into bow pose from here. Dhanurasana. So you want your feet hip width distance apart. Bend into your knees and see if you can reach back holding onto your ankles. And our shoulders should be feeling pretty open as well as our hips. So see if you can push your feet into the palms in order to lift up. And you're trying to lift your thighs off the floor without widening your knees too much. Keep hugging into the midline. Don't worry about how high you're going here. Just get a nice stretch. And let's release. Keep your knees bent. Just let your hands stack one over the other, forehead down, and just drop your feet side to side in a windshield wiper motion. Releasing the low back a little. And after back bends, I usually like to do spinal twists or some side bends, lateral flexion. So we're just going to flip over onto our backs and we'll come into banana pose. Really lovely side body stretch. So as you lay on your back, you can bring your hips over towards the right side of your mat and then wiggle head and shoulders to the left. As you straighten your legs, walk your feet and your ankles over to the left. And you can reach your arms up, holding onto the ankles, maybe even, or sorry, and you can reach your arms up, maybe holding onto the elbows, and maybe crossing your right ankle over your left one. Push your right hip down, just a big side body stretch. <sighs> Let yourself relax in this pose. This should be a really nourishing one. One that you can just enjoy your time in. side bends are really undervalued but they can really do so much when it comes to low back pain hip pain and also overall tension in the body take another five breaths here Make our way to the other side. You can bend into your knees. This time your hips will need to go to the left side of your mat. Chest and head moving to the right. Reaching out through your legs, walking your ankles to the right. And maybe crossing your left ankle over the right one if you want to intensify the side bend. Try to keep pushing your left hip down on the mat. Five more deep breaths. What can you let go of right now? What can you soften? Release. 
balance. Making your way back to center, and we'll set ourselves up for Shavasana. Our last pose together. Get as comfortable as you can, shrugging your shoulders down and away from your ears. Take up lots of space. Close your eyes. And really pay attention to the shifts that have occurred from head to toe. Shifts that have happened physically, mentally, emotionally. Shavasana is your time to receive. To quiet down. And to acknowledge all the work that you've done. Enjoy this rest for a few minutes. Take some deeper breaths, fill up your chest, your belly, notice how these deeper breaths can reawaken your body, revitalize your mind, move a little. You can stretch your arms up, reaching overhead. Lengthen fingers away from your toes. And let's roll to one side, push into the floor to lift up, taking a seat. And sit up tall. Let's join our hands at the front of the heart, Anjali Mudra. Can you find one thing to be grateful for right now? One thing to be proud of? And you might dedicate your practice to someone Sending them a blessing, sending them your love. And we'll close our practice with the chant of Om one time. Inhale to chant, big breath in. Namaste. 
Thank you so much, yogis, for doing this slow flexibility flow with me. I would love to know how this went for you. Please do leave me a comment below. If you are new to my channel, subscribe. You can just press that subscribe button. It really does a lot to help support free yoga on the internet. If you'd like to stay a little bit longer on your mat, I would definitely recommend this meditation right here. Thank you again. Namaste.